Hello, and welcome to a slightly revised version of NASA Spaceflight Live. I was out at the California Science Center this week watching Endeavor get stacked. Uh, EJ, who's here with us, did I just make my thing do a, oh God, don't, don't do that, Apple. EJ was out shooting and, and, and checking out uh, NG20 this week. And of course, we have Sawyer on this week, and Sawyer was being Sawyer and flexing on all of us as he always does, and just being awesome. But a lot to go over. Let's get into it. And here we go. We have liftoff. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our 68 chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Unfolds to go. Indeed. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. This is methane to be igniting the flare, correct? Yikes. You said, sir, we don't need any more of these. All right, so it's NASA Space Flight Live, but. On a Friday, we should probably address the elephant in the room, but uh, joining me, as usual, we have our ever-competent cast of cohorts, starting off with EJ. EJ, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Jack. How are you? Good. You don't, you don't have any lame visual effects that pop up when you do a double thumbs up? I mean, I get, I get no. fireworks. No I, no, I don't. I mean, that's cool, but <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't do that. Is it cool? I don't think it's. Uh, I've got to figure out how to turn that off. Well, thank you for uh, for joining us on this inaugural revamp of NSF Live. And uh, also joining us is Sawyer. Sawyer, how are you doing, buddy? Good. First off, please don't turn those off. They're fantastic. The random thumbs up and fireworks. I am all about it. And uh, yeah, I may not have random effects. But I has cat. Nice. It's blocked by the uh, by my name right now, but I promise you, I has cat. Well, we'll have to take you on confidence. There you go. It's that, easier. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I see cat here. Cat confirmed. <laughs> Excellent. So, so I guess yeah. Elephant in the room. We should probably just address it right off the bat. NSF Live is normally on Sunday. Now it's on Friday, and uh, what's going on here? But. The long and short of it is, much like Starship, we're always doing some testing and experimenting. So we figured we would try a new time slot for NSF in a slightly tweaked format. Um, if you guys have questions about whatever we're talking about, you know the whole deal. Type in chat at NASA Spaceflight. We'll see your questions pop up. Um, we'll interact with you all there in chat. Um, but you know, we figured we have this week in spaceflight which you should all be watching every Friday as we publish it. And this week in Spaceflight is sort of a very blow-by-blow -blow, um, good uh, update on everything that's happened in the week in Spaceflight. That's why it's called This Week in Spaceflight. So uh, rather than make NSF Live a little bit more redundant, uh, we're just going to have more of a conversation about it and uh, less of a, and, and this week the thing happened. Like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the stuff that happened. We'll talk about how we felt about it, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of a tweak to the format. Let us know what you guys think in the comments, classic YouTube. Let us know what you think in the comments, but for real, um, we're trying this out and we can, uh, see how it goes. So yeah, this week in space flight is awesome. You should definitely watch it. Uh, if you want just the facts in terms of what all happened, Alicia and the team, Alex and them do a great job with it. So just a quick plug for this week in space flight, but, uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it with the first thing that I can think of this week, uh, which was SpaceX launched Cygnus. And you were both there, right? We were. Oh, yeah. Did you get to be in proximity with each other, or you just both happened to be at the Cape for the launch? Um, 
I was uh, down in Jetty Park. Sawyer, where were you? We were, we were not near each other. I was about six inches to the right of where this video was taken. <laughs> Sorry, well, this video. Well, backwards. You there said there was you said there was flexing, Jack. So I mean, here we I, go. Yeah, we're, thank you. I, we're like I didn't even have to say in. it. I didn't yeah. even have to say it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's all right. It was well. If I really wanted to flex, I could say that our camera for this was lucky enough to be. 2.1 miles away, I believe, from the actual launch site itself, and three and a half from the landing zone. So I could have said that, but I didn't. But well, you just no. did. You just did. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> this is uh, this was an awesome launch. And I mean, EJ, you were you said you were at Jetty Park. Yep, in Jetty Park. It's on the south side of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at, at Port Canaveral. Nice. How uh, how was it? What was the what was the vibe like? There was a lot of people there. I don't know, probably like two, three hundred people out on the jetty, something like that. Uh, we had, there was clear skies, so you saw that rocket all the way up to engine cutoff, and you, I lost it after the boost back burn. And I'm, I'm not talking like with any optics or anything, no phone, no camera, no nothing. Like I'm talking about just being able to see it. You could see it through the boost back, and then I lost it for a second, and then when it started doing the entry burn. Yeah, saw it all the way down to the surface. It was really, really cool. I mean, that the picture, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You had a clear track of that thing all the way up, which is really, really cool. Really nice to see a launch like that. Heck yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, one one thing that I noticed, I don't know if you saw this too, EJ. Um, yeah. For the landing part, uh, I mean, used to seeing these landings, we kind of know they're pretty common at this point, but... It's not that often that we get them coming in from the northeast again, since that's the trajectory towards the ISS. Yep. Is it just me, or did it look like right before the landing burn that it was flying almost completely sideways, like at 90 degrees, just a little bit inclined? It definitely took a turn. Uh, after, the, after the entry burn, those grid fins really pulled that thing a good distance away. I also kind of noticed, and once again, this is just could have been the angle that I was looking at that that trajectory seems to be a little bit this it seemed to be a little bit lofted. It was very steep. Like, I don't know if you can tell from the cameras, but just, you know, I've watched descents before in, in real life. This one looked to be a really steep uh, ascent. That's probably because Cygnus is not very high mass. You know what I mean? But I mean, we could, could get into techni technicalities, but yeah, it definitely it definitely was steep, and it definitely took a huge turn going back into the landing site. It, it was almost, I, I'm not saying like it was flying around, but uh, it definitely definitely was pretty um, sideways when it came in after that entry burn. Yeah, because I'm nice. looking around, and all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> where's the booster? No, that can't be it. It's going sideways. It's like, no, wait, that's the booster. <laughs> it was really cool. Or... More cross range, more better? Question mark. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, we might that, that, it just we might goes to show. It just goes to show that it can hit the northeastern trajectory, at like fifty-six degrees inclined, and the southern polar corridor can hit as well. You just had yeah, to look do at it. that. You had... Yeah, beautiful views on this one from the oh. from the SpaceX tracking cams. It, like absolutely outstanding, uh, and of course it right. wasn't. It helps that it wasn't a middle of the night Starlink, right? Like we actually got a nice clear day launch of Falcon. Get to see booster butt. Yep. I right. Uh <laughs> So it was a stubby nozzle. It was carrying cargo mm -hmm. to the ISS. Um we do have a few questions here I can hit as we discuss Cygnus, but uh yeah, it's, I mean, Sawyer, any any thoughts on on payload or uh, or the mission otherwise before I start jumping into viewer questions? I mean, it's always cool that there's all the different science on board, and Cygnus is so unique that it can basically launch on almost every launch vehicle that's capable <laughs> of going to the space station. It's launched before on Atlas V twice. It's launched on Antares 100 and 200 and will go to the 300 series once they start building the engines in the first stage with Firefly. And now on Falcon 9, which has now sent two resupply vehicles to the ISS. It's just, that part blows my mind. And also the fact that they're talking about being able to, you know, test out materials to help grow, to 
grow retinas in space to help with vision. Uh, you've got the Genes in Space program. Uh, you've got things that are looking at diseases back here on Earth, like Alzheimer's and things like that, where they're studying materials that if they mix just right in zero gravity, maybe they could be manufactured there and help us back here on Earth. Uh, that, that stuff just blows my mind. And I, I love these ISS resupply missions, even though they're kind of, you know, boring to some people. The science is like, oh... Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's the exact opposite of boring, and it's the exact kind of fodder that you would want for, uh, you know, people are like, why are we spending time going to space? It's a waste of time and money, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, do you understand all of the different things that we're able to do um, on Earth for humans, like regular humans, uh, because of the space program and because of the things that, we, uh, that we're able to learn? Um, but yeah, EJ, you've seen, have you seen Cygnus launch on all three vehicles it's launched on is that correct yep yep i've seen ng11 oa5 and now ng20 seen it launch from flex three different yeah hey somebody had to somebody had to combat what you were saying what you were doing a little bit earlier okay i mean i don't know if it would technically count as three launch vehicles from three space centers but i mean cape Canaveral space force station kennedy space center wallops island but See, that Atlas launch was at Slick 41. Slick 41 is technically on Kennedy Space Center property, but I don't think people classify that as a Kennedy Space Center launch site, right? So I don't know. Does that it count? Is considered Space Force, yeah. yeah. Does it count? Okay. Three launch three launch vehicles from two different two different space centers, which is pretty cool. If you wanted to if you wanted to go with three, I would I would give it to you. But do you have a right. what what is your favorite Cygnus launch that, you, that you've seen? I liked NG20. So the booster came back. Heck got, yeah. I got to see it again. <laughs> yeah, not much not much better out there, at least right now, than, uh, than a good old-fashioned RTLS. But swag-wise, was it as good? That's a, that's, a really, that's a really good question. How do you feel about Cygnus swag, EJ? Oh. Oh, I mean, it's, it's quite good. It's pretty good. <laughs> I mean... I don't hate it. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I don't, I don't mind it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know that I've seen better, better swag. So yeah, I would, I would say that is in fact pretty good. It's almost like a, like a weird Mickey Mouse hat. <laughs> like Mickey's ears yeah. are, are melting Dude, off of his head. If slowly. I walk the street with, this, I'd get a lot of weird looks. Let me put it to you like that. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Um, cool. Oh, Let's I do a couple of questions. How about, I, I don't know. You might have to wear that for the rest of the show. I'm, I'm absolutely not putting that on you, but I'm just glad you had it. I'm glad you had it. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, can't see me is asking was Cygnus a bullseye landing. Did they, uh, did they manage to hit the center of the landing zone? I think they, I think it was pretty close. I mean, these RTLS missions tend to be a little accurate. They tend to be a little more, more accurate, right. Than like coming back in from, I mean, because Cygnus is low mass, right. It looked, it looked dead on center, but I didn't, I haven't actually seen the footage, but it looked, it looked right from like the quick two second, like replay that I saw from like clip from like SpaceX's X account, you know, Kevin, can we see the replay? Yeah, I guess we'll we'll judge yeah, for Michael ourselves. Reed, the producer. <laughs> Coming in hot. It still is crazy to me how late the uh, the legs appear to deploy. I mean, clearly they're not deploying actually late. They're deploying at the right time, but uh, it all, it always just feels last minute to me. That looks like a bullseye. I would call that a bullseye. That looks really yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I was that's what I was thinking. It looks pretty. That looks pretty dead center. All right, you heard it here. Yeah. We are calling it a. What's with the Sawyer? Do you have a train that's about to run into your house? Somebody has a train uh, in their near vicinity. Thank you, Brightline. <laughs> hey, all right. High speed rail. Uh, <laughs> Get it. It, it takes, it takes oh. me back to the days of having uh, Chris G on because Chris G always had like the three o'clock fruit train oh, from yeah. Tropicana or whatever it was. Uh, it takes <laughs> me back. Um, so, Telstar 86. Oh, go ahead. 
No, Jack, I was going to say, you were talking about the landing legs look like they deploy at the last second. It's because if they deployed them any earlier, they'd have to overcome aerodynamic load. The idea is that, you know, the landing legs have a little actuator rod that pushes them out, right? And then they go and then gravity takes over the rest. You don't want those things deploying and having them work like a speed brake and then having aerodynamic forces push them back up, right? So they have to use gravity. They have to use gravity so they can fall into the position and then the locking collets will go in and lock the, the pistons into place. You can only really do that when the vehicle's going slow enough to where aerodynamic forces won't push the legs back up in. You don't want that. Huh. That's also can, kind of the reason why if you're if a booster is coming back from a um, like a crazy trajectory and it kind of comes in a little bit sideways at the last second, why if you look, one leg kind of deploys faster than the other because of uh, airspeed on either side of the booster as it's coming in. Hey, EJ, huh. along those lines, isn't there a, a, another vehicle that, say, dropped its landing necessity, such like gear, at 400 feet or so above the runway? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, um, it was uh, the big one that uh, could carry a satellite into in space in a payload bay. What, what was that called, Sawyer? Yeah, I, I recall Buran? that one. Buran? You're thinking Buran, isn't it? It's Buran. Yeah. Well, that's... Buran never moved any payload into space. I'm just saying. <laughs> I had, to, I had to do the rare but, Jack advocating for a Buran thing. But yes, space <laughs> shuttle. I think they deployed the gear like 400 feet above the runway and keeping in mind that they are traveling very fast and there is no chance of a go around. It, mm. It's a little nerve wracking. So I guess SpaceX taking after the uh, shuttle theory of, yeah, we want the less drag and also to scare the crud out of the people watching. Yep. And then the shuttle's gear too, it only deploys by gravity. It's basically held in there and when the door opens, that's when they that's when they fall out. They the only the way to actuate that whole thing is just to let the latch go on the door and it falls open. And then the door falling open actuates a a lever that opens up the landing gear and the landing gear falls too. Which made it really interesting yeah, I mean, having to repack the gear after landing too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the shuttle program, before they had the the shuttle transport vehicle, they'd roll the thing into the VAB, pick it up in the VAB, and fold the gear up in there. After that, after they had the transport vehicle, they did it in the orbiter processing facilities. Oh, shuttle. I, I miss it. But also, I'm glad we're getting into a new era, and we have Starship, which is, as Chris B. will always say, I have to say this when we talk about Starship, and or shuttle. Uh, it's really like kind of shuttle 2.0 in a lot of ways. Um, here's one from Telstar86, and then we will move on. Speaking of shuttle, uh, Telstar is asking, do the cargo craft ever deliver water, or does the ISS rely on recycled water? I mean, the ISS does rely on recycled water, but do they get like top-ups every now and then, get a, get a fresh couple tons of good old H2O? Oh, yeah. yeah. They will get water yeah. deliveries for some of these. And what's interesting is, is that the water isn't necessarily all potable. You've got some that's used for experiments. A lot of it is also used actually to shield for any potential radiation. Uh, and then the fact that, yes, you do have the um, wastewater re replacement. So basically it, it filters out astronauts' urine and sweat and turns it into drinkable water which one of the experiments that was going up on this mission was actually going to be taking a look at the results of it with um, some different type of, I believe it was spectroscopy or some kind of uh, study up close to see if there was any new or undiscovered bacteria or viruses or things that create as a result of the recycling process. Nice. Uh, also for you, Sawyer, but Tesla Mac. Of the water, but yeah, it's in... 98% reusable, I believe, for the water, though. Tesla Mass Max is asking what your cat's name is, Sawyer. We, you already said it, but they probably just didn't hear you. That's Jake. He's uh, oh. laying flat across my lap at the moment, so I can't quite pan the camera down to show it, but tilt. he's being tilt. very, very adorable. Tilt, uh, not My pan. camera doesn't tilt that... It doesn't <laughs> tilt that way. You can't pan down. Um, and Did I, I guess Chris W. 
Yes, you've, thoroughly. We might have Good. to go into. Then my a... joke didn't pan. <sighs> Chris W is asking how we feel about the stubby <laughs> nozzle. EJ, I don't Ugh. know if we had you weigh in on one of our streams before. Uh, I'm sure you have on your on your own Twitch, which everybody watching here should be sub to EJ's <laughs> Twitch. But EJ, uh, stubby nozzle, yay nay. Uh, from an engineering standpoint, great, really, really good idea. From an aesthetic standpoint, thanks, I hate it. Right. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really good classification, Sawyer. In, just in yeah. case that viewers have forgotten where you stand, did you, would you like to put a stake in the ground? Yes, stubby bad. All right. Um, let's thank some people and then move on to the next topic. RC Horseman, thanks for gifting five red team memberships. Jeff Rowe gifting one. Jim Cavett gifting one. And Air Crafter. I wonder if they do air related crafts uh gifting five red team memberships rc horseman gifting five more apocalypse cow gifting 10 holy cow y'all thank you so much musical wolves with a super chat um asking about bacon being used to repair ingenuity come on now we're going to talk about ingenuity we just give us like you know 20 30 minutes we'll get there i like i um, like that idea we should do that uh <clears throat> ground umbilical carrier plate which, again, every time I read, just sends shivers down my spine. Uh, Gup? Uh, they say, yeah. They, Gu Gup? Mr. Gup? Gup? <laughs> uh, they say smash that like button. Thank you for that. Apocalypse Cow gifting five more memberships, and I'd rather be flying an X-Wing. Thank you for the super chat. They say, f uh, we'll do that. We'll save that one because it's a Starship question. We'll save that one for Starship. So, shuttle. Talking all yeah. about shuttle this week. We had the glorious stacking of Endeavor, the final time it will take flight, if you want to call it that. Um, and I had the good fortune of, of being at the, the Science Center to, for that. So it was really cool to uh, see the old bird lifted up and dropped into place. I, um, I mean, if you want my in-depth thoughts and feelings about it, just go watch the stream because we were hanging out with Garrett Raceman and just like chit chatting and standing in awe of this thing. So uh absolutely thank you to the Science Center for having us on hand. But uh EJ, you look like you you uh, you had something to say there and we started talking about shuttle. What is what's on your mind, good buddy? Uh no, I was just I was just looking at the lift. <laughs> no, um <laughs> it's really cool to see it. Um they're using the, the I like the I'm a little bit of a sucker for the mechanical engineering behind how, like how rockets go together. If you guys don't know me, like, so seeing the, that weird bracket that they use that where they pick the shuttle up. Right. And then one crane lifts more than the other crane and the bracket turns to a vertical position and they let the other one go. And then you have it and then they move it into position. It's that's super, super cool. Kind of a hoisting nerd too. If anybody likes cranes out there, it's, it's really, really interesting stuff. And can we get a, can we get a shirt? Like a shirt in the merch store that just says like hoisting nerd or something like that. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel, like there's, I feel like there's something there's something about that phraseology. There's something there. Um, hey, Herbertack. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, I, I don't. Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure how to like briefly encapsulate my feelings on uh, on this topic. I'm certainly glad that they have that. The California Science Center is going to have if a fully stacked shuttle and be the only place where you. Well, I wish there was more places you could see that, but at least there will be one, and that's the Science Center. Um, did either of you get to see Endeavor launch ever? We'll go with you first, Ethan. <laughs> um, I think I've seen Discovery and Atlantis launch. I saw SDS-116 and SDS-117. Uh, I don't remember. I think Discovery was one and Atlantis was the second one. If I'm remembering right, that's off the top of my head. Uh, but um, no, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure you have though, right? Alex in the back channel predicting a flex incoming and he's right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the, first, the first launch of anything I've ever seen in my life was STS-130, which was Space Shuttle Endeavor. That was the one that brought the cupola up to the space station. And it just so happened, and this is, 
talk about out of the blue here. This is going to sound off topic, but it's still on topic. So I was at a restaurant meeting people from the internet, which I advise you don't do now. But anyway, um, there was a party going on in the other room for one of the astronauts' family members put on by this site, I don't know, NASA Space Flight. I don't know what that is. But yeah, it was an NSF party basically in the next room. And I ended up meeting one of the uh, astronauts' mothers at that flight, Terry Vertz's mom. And uh, his mom and I are still friends, and him and I are still friends as a result. So, uh, yeah, that was also, I got to do that because of Make-A-Wish, and it sparked my entire love of spaceflight and got me hooked on going to all these launches. Flex done. Nice. No, I mean, Sawyer, I think we might have to have a new segment on the show that's just Sawyer flexes um, or like a flex off. I don't, I don't know. Well, again, we're trying new things. Who knows? <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I mean, Space Shuttle, how do we how do we feel about about this this vehicle now this many years down the line, um, sort of with the clarity of of time to uh, S tier, organizer. S tier. Oh yeah. See, so okay. Are we doing a tier list? Because I'm. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Bro, yes. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> S tier. You woke really? Jake oh, yeah. up with that. <laughs> S tier. Sorry. Sir, what tier would you put shuttle in? Oh, uh, if you take away the bias, I go A tier. I okay. I see I cannot abide by putting shuttle in the S tier even though it starts with the letter S haha um <laughs> I, it's just it it had too many issues it never achieved a flight rate that it was supposed to achieve it never brought the cost of launch down to the point that it was supposed to um and it never launched crew from Vandenberg which was a huge reason for having all the cross range and all of that it never did what uh, whatever well, what was the name of the reference the reference mission but i'll give you i'll give you i'll i'll give you a moment i'm just like how do you how do you justify putting that in s tier i don't explain well, yourself sir well okay i can tend to say that the shuttle is an amazing design i think Agreed. that people operating it never gave it the chance that it needed okay think you said you know never none of the equipment ever really worked, worked right but think about all the things on the shuttle that actually did work and never had a problem like the landing gear for instance right for sure see what i'm talking about they, i mean there's a there's a thousand bajillion different systems yes technical term on the shuttle that all worked correctly every time you know what i mean like there was never there never a problem with the lights inside the vehicle or there's no right. problem with the payload bay lights or like the slide wires inside of the payload bay or the airlock. I mean, maybe there's a couple of weird things here and there with the airlock once or twice, but you know, I can tend to say it's a good design and what would have made that what would have made it work is if you flew it more, if you, if they float it more, you would have been more likely to catch something because you're putting the thing together all the time, right? If you, if you have an aggressive schedule and you, you launch a lot, you're, you're good. There's more opportunity for iteration. There's more opportunity to fix the things that eventually doom the program. Yeah, I think I think low flight rate is absolutely one of the things I would I would mark up as a negative. Like I'm not saying it was like a super buggy vehicle or it, things didn't work. I just mean it was supposed to launch 12 to 24 times a year and basically never approached that that number. It was never given the leash to run because it had to be a nasa project and everything had to be perfect and then you know through various reasons we became further and further risk averse um i, I don't get me wrong i think shuttle's a beautiful vehicle the most probably the most beautiful rocket ever built um i think it's an amazing achievement in terms of engineering but i, I don't know i i would struggle putting it in s tier for a variety of reasons we could, this might be a this might be a, a derail we have to save to come back to <laughs> Because I feel like we could probably argue this for a whole hour just on its own. But Dude, um, one, of the, way, one of the things. There, what's that? Go ahead. Don't forget, there was a whole mission that had to be reflown because they had trouble opening the airlock door. So there yeah, are, I don't there know, are still once, issues. Once or twice here and there. But okay, all right. Let me let me at least say this. I got. Okay? Go. Anyone can look at that space shuttle. Look at a space shuttle and say that's a spaceship. 
that flies into space. All right. So it's got an aesthetic thing going for it. All right. That I just don't think you're going to get with any other spacecraft. Maybe Buran, for instance. Right. Like maybe. But, you know, you look at a you look at a pod, you kind of have to explain to people what that does. It looks like a gumdrop. You know what I mean? And that's not a bad yeah. thing. But I think the shuttle is kind of iconic in the regard that, you know, anyone can look at that thing. And be like, yep, that flies into space. That's a spaceship. That's what a spaceship looks like. Yeah, I mean, purely yeah, from let an me aesthetic get my very standpoint. Quick... I would agree. Go ahead, Sawyer. No, I want to give my very quick reason for my A tier. Uh, I mean, the shuttle did things that no other vehicle ever could in terms of what it was able to bring into space at once. It could carry massive payloads. It could do communication satellites, uh, NRO satellites. Uh, it built the TDRS network. It built the International Space Station. Uh, it could just carry a science lab or science hab inside of it. It did all of those. And yeah, I mean, it, it served a purpose very much. At the same time, though, like you were kind of hinting at, it is the most complex machine ever built, and it showed yep. it, both in terms of occasional flight issues, uh, and then, of course, the whole fact that it needed months and months to refly when they were planning on flying multiple flights per month. So. Right. That, that's, that's like my main tier reasoning. Biggest ding yeah, would be that. That's the whole like loss of crew multiple times, no abort modes during SRB, flight. Like there's just a lot. Don't get me wrong, EJ. I, like I love the look of the shuttle. Like like I said, purely aesthetically, what a machine. Like it's gorgeous. It looks like a spacecraft should. It's got a little bit wings. It comes yep. back and lands on a runway. You put it back on the stack. It flies again. Like I totally get that. Um, mm -hmm. But like, not. Taking into account things other than the aesthetics, I, I don't know. We, I don't know. We might have to settle on A tier. Can you can you abide by A tier? Yeah, I can I can give it A tier. That's fine. But see, I mean, another thing to consider is you know the shuttle. Sawyer <laughs> named off all the things that the shuttle did, right? <laughs> Dude, I could do this forever. <laughs> I could do this forever. Sawyer named off all that good stuff that the shuttle did. Um, like oh, I don't know, like uh, fixing and maintaining satellites like Hubble and Solar Maximum, if you really want to go old school. I don't think we have anything that can do that right now. Also, building space stations. Pretty sure we don't have something that can do that. I'm ju just putting it out there. Just putting it out I'm there. Not Till Starship. I'm not, yeah. I'm not disagreeing. Um, but yeah, I guess we, we before we just do this for a whole entire hour, which maybe we can, I don't know. I feel, I'm, I feel like there's a thread we should pull here, but... You can do this uh, all day, man. <laughs> Speaking of space stations, Starlab, uh, a yep. space station company, has announced that they're going to fly on Starship. Who uh, who wants to to wrangle this puppy here? This is pretty cool. So, you want this one? I'll give this one to you, EJ. Okay, so. Starlab actually had a contract. Uh, they signed it. They have a contract with SpaceX to launch an eight meter space station module inside of Starship, which, I mean, we said all that cool stuff about the shuttle, but this tells me that, you know, Starship could quickly move into that market of being able to do everything that the shuttle did, but, but better. Um, also, eight meter module means at least an eight meter payload bay. That's pretty cool. Um, and actually, I mean, just on a little more of a, a little more of a poignant thought here, you know, Starship is already starting to get commercial contracts. You know, uh, one could make the case, I suppose, for you know, Starship. Not there's no need for it, right? There's no need for it. 100 tons into low Earth orbit, fully fully reusable every time. Why would you need something like that? There's no use case for the market there. But, you know. That's like kind of a devil's advocate thing. I think if you make a vehicle that can move 100 tons into space, low cost, full reusable, you're going to start to get contracts for it. And this shows that there are interested parties in Starship's capabilities, right? It's like, which one came first, chicken or the egg? Do you, do you make a vehicle to service what the launch market needs? Or do you make a vehicle that can do, that can't do, that can do everything better than anything flying right now, right? And then the... Uh, people will make payloads for that vehicle. It's which one? I mean, SpaceX seems to be going with the ladder there, and it seems to be working. Yeah, the lucky thing is, well, not lines. lucky. The, the smart thing is, they is SpaceX has has Starlink. Starlink is yep. the engine that can power the 
Starship Cadence uh, until the industry catches up and builds payloads for the rocket. I mean, famously, even with Falcon Heavy, right? When Falcon Heavy came online, it's, there was sort of a little bit of a lag there but before mm -hmm. uh, commercial um, operators were able to take advantage of its uh, lift capacity. Sawyer, I, I believe I, I cut you off. Go ahead, good buddy. That's all right. Well, I was in the tube box. No, I was going to say um, it's kind of tying in what we were just talking about. Shuttle was a payload bay that was designed specifically for military specs. So it was basically, we want this as opposed to SpaceX and this, where it's, hey, here's our whole capacity. Design whatever the heck you want, and we'll lift it into space. I think that's kind of the new era in the whole private space flight thing is that difference of we're going to mandate what your max payload is versus we're going to allow you to come up with whatever max payload you can design. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Now, I have a question for chat, and I'm, I'm interested. This is for Twitch chat, and this is for the YouTube chat too. All right, so do you guys think that Starship to deploy this style of module is going to have like a chomper fairing, like what you've seen in the renders or some other type of payload bay door. I mean, personally, I think it's going to have shuttle style payload bay doors, right? One doors that open up like this, not like this. Personally, I, I'm interested to see what kind of, what kind of responses we're going to get from chat. Yeah. Ooh, that's I see a lot of chompers in there. Yeah. A lot I of packs. Chats, I'm but... hoping, I mean, you can hope shuttle payload based style, but it's probably chopper. I think that I would say... shuttle style doors would probably be better for integration when you're on the ground. How do you move that chopper fairing out of the way when you're going to put a payload in? Yeah. Like the C-130 I, I, maybe? Yeah. Like it swings to the side or up and over? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I, I feel like whichever, whichever answer is right is going to end up being the one that takes up the least amount of internal volume. Like whatever the mechanism box, like have it slide open. That's cool. <laughs> it's like, it's like futuristic and it uh, it's like crumples on itself. Like it folds into itself. So there is no, like it just, the, the nose cone goes away somehow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe. Or DeLorean uh, doors, totally impractical, but DeLorean doors. Doors that open up they like look, this, like yes. this, not like this. Yes, I'm on board. <laughs> you, you have sold me. Um, so, yeah, we have a tweet here from SpaceX talking about having three boosters ready to go, plus a fourth one about to be ready to go. Pretty nifty. Uh, speaking of demand. <laughs> do That's you think, a lot of boosters. Yeah, like, do you think that uh, we have enough demand so far in just testing in the Starlink to... Uh, to fully achieve a, a rapid cadence with Starship? I mean, I certainly do. I think that Starlink is more than enough of a justification here. With, with even the Starlink V2 minis that launch on Falcon 9, uh, those, I, I think the profitability is from Starlink, not even from the launch vehicle. They're not making money off of Starlink missions. And I see a lot of people say that, and I think that's right, but I, I, they're not making money off the Starlink missions, like in terms of launch services, but they're making money off of the missions from Starlink being a profitable venture. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't right. see that market going away. And because Starlinks are in uh, a decaying type of orbit where they constantly, constantly need to fire their thrusters to boost the satellites, you're looking at, uh, a constellation that does not have a 10 to 15 year shelf life like a geostationary satellite would a geostationary satellite network would you you're looking at a five year uh shelf life on these starlink satellites and if you're maintaining a 3000 plus low earth orbit constellation you're constantly going to need to be launching stuff so as long as starlink stays profitable there's always going to be a demand for this and it's shown with falcon 9 that it favors reusability absolutely right so with full reuse, you're in Starship. Yeah, I don't think the market is going anywhere, Jack. I agree with you. I think they're gonna always they have plenty of uses to launch it. And I think it also serves another purpose in this case, in that it's showing off what Starship can do. You know, obviously there's still some people that are like, oh, I don't know. It's still in early development. You see all the major media out there saying, oh, it blew up. It's a bad thing. Uh, even though we all know <laughs> it's part of testing and it's fine. But I think that's going to be their way of proving, like, look, here's the benefit of it. Launch it up, use our own payload first so that you can see that it works, 
and then once you see all of our Starlink missions happening successfully, and then being able to reuse it and fly it all again, I think that will then allow more people to feel more comfortable to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to fly my payload on Starship. Yeah. I, I almost feel like, though, since you were two or in two bucks, like you should have should have been like button heads a little bit. I don't know. We'll we'll work on it. <laughs> S tier, A tier, S tier, A tier. <laughs> S uh, always. Let's see here. Uh, I'd rather be flying an X wing. Thank you for the support. They say for the longer, like the stretched starship. Uh, is it possible to add length above where the lift pins are mounted? That way, the lower tower might still work without rebuilding it. Yeah, I think to a point that makes sense. Agree? Disagree? Sawyer, go first. Uh, hey, let me just read the question again there. Like, um, in order to support a oh, taller yeah. ship, a stretched ship, you just put the lifting points further down so that the ship can still be lifted by the current tower. That's that's how I'm reading this. Is oh. that is that a... I mean, yeah, I don't see why not. At this point, it doesn't seem like there's a need for it, but down the line, say, if they want to do the Starship heavy which is obviously not like three of them strapped together but slightly taller maybe a little bit wider then yeah i i don't see that being any issue dj um yeah i don't i don't see that being a problem you you the further those pins are down towards the uh the top of the methane tank bulkhead it's just yeah that's just gonna make it stronger i mean the only time that would be a little weird is if those those pins somehow end up like below starship center of gravity, then it could get a little weird trying to lift that thing up because then it becomes a balancing act and not just pulling something up. You're pushing something up at that point. But it, I think, yeah, you definitely could do that. Yeah, I think I think basically, like you said, there's a limit in terms of uh, of how low they could go. But thankfully, raptors are heavy, <laughs> so there's. Yeah. There, there's a good amount of center of, of or there's a good amount of mass down there at the bottom, so your center of mass is hopefully relatively low. Um, good question though. From I'd rather be flying an X-wing. Ground mm -hmm. umbilical carrier plate. Thanks for the super chat. They say team most efficient nozzle for the job. Fair. Chris W. Thanks for gifting a red team membership. Air. Oh, I gotta say this right. Air. Air Burditch? Air Burtach? If anyone wants to take a swing at this, be my guest. I said I'm sorry I'm... before, dude. Airbertak. Uh, yeah, let's I go. think Airbertak. Came Thank in with you, that Airbertak. gnarly freaking tip, right? Yeah, holy cow. $100 super chat. They say hello, EJ, wow. and welcome aboard. Thank you so much. That is extremely generous of you, and we appreciate it quite what? quite much. I can't even I can't even talk. You've broken my brain, Airbertak. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate I love it when we quite break much. Jack. Uh, my brain, it's failing me. Um, also from AirBertac, they asked a question. How about instead of payload doors like shuttle, maybe a retractable, I hate this word, tonneau? Tonneau? I don't know a how to say that A tonneau cover? Uh, yeah, maybe like a tonneau, like the, that's what I was talking about. Like the nose cone like retracts into the barrel of the, it's absolutely not going to happen. But it's fun to think about. <laughs> what like uh, like on Cybertruck like a re the retractable tonneau yeah. yeah I mean that would work yeah like the bread the bread box thing yeah that I don't see why not I mean you have a hundred potentially a hundred and fifty ton payload mass to low Earth orbit I I think you don't need to worry about like kind of things that the shuttle did needing to make the doors as light as possible I'm pretty sure they they have a little more um, flexibility in the in the type of door that they they make you know but hopefully not flexibility in the doors. Yes, precisely. That would be, I'm just trying to make Sawyer happy, okay? I'm just trying to make him proud of me with with my puns. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always proud of you, Jack. Oh, God. Um, but By the way, Kevin, you, do you have that uh, first picture that you showed really quick? The one with the SpaceX logo with the boosters? Jack, don't do that again. I... Okay. <laughs> yes, definitely do that again, or at least oh, the thumbs up one no. with the the Good little Lord. bubble. Chat, thing. I'm outnumbered. Chat, I'm outnumbered. Help <laughs> me. There it is, because it reminded me of like an album cover with the four or five boosters that are in there, ready, waiting, like looking down at the camera, like there. 
Tell me that doesn't look like a sick album cover. Kind of does. And I want people... I want people to actually tweet at me and turn that into an album cover. Like, screenshot it and band... see what you'd come up with. What would be the band name? Like, SpaceX and the Super Heavies? Or, like... No, no. Steel... Super... Water... Supersonic Red Pepper Propulsion. I got you. <laughs> That's the album name. That's the album. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's fair. What's the band? That would have to be, like, Water Towers and uh, Flying... What? No, we'll, we'll workshop it. We'll work. Chat, <laughs> chat if you have any ideas. How about... Yeah. We'll... How about... It's orange. Hey, much like Jake. Like my cat. It's yeah. orange. Which I like that though. <laughs> does he have uh does Jake have the brain cell today or is it with a different orange cat? Oh no, he's he's got the brain cell. Nice. That's <laughs> rare. It's rare that any one orange cat has the shared orange cat brain cell. Um uh, maybe we should like I don't know, make Jake take a test or something. Probably a very smart guy. He's cat. special, all right. Oh. Even though he's licking my armpit, he's special, all right. <laughs> I don't even know what you say to that. Bideford, gifting 10 red team <laughs> memberships. Thank you, Bideford. It's very sweet of you. Um, all right, well, Starship, we talked about uh, Star Lab, Star Everything. We This is Star NSF Live. Why not? And it's Star Jake, Star EJ, and Star Ear. Huh? Oh, that was good. Pun token huh? awarded. That's not good. Um, really quick before we move on from this, Kelly McCraith is asking, what's up with the DOD take, trying to take over Starship? That is not how I would phrase the news article blurb thing that came out over the last week, which was that the DOD is interested in operating and owning a starship or a fleet of starships rather than paying oh my gosh we can hear jake purring he's, he's eating my microphone too but yes he is a very clingy cat and yes is very happy cat oh apologies we got full screen jake Hooray. especially when he gives his good side to the camera there yeah nice uh we got dod wants to use starship um in any internal capacity so if you know maybe it's a risky mission or a classified mission or National security, hub to blub. Um, it's not that the DOD is trying to like commandeer the entire Starship program. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if I would phrase it that way. Uh, I don't know. Thoughts? Anybody? They're looking to procure vehicles. So I mean, SpaceX and Elon and Gwen have said that they want Starship to operate like a 747 that flies into space. Well, or I mean, if it's a car, if it has a cargo capacity. Uh, there, I would imagine they would procure it just like a like they'd procure a C five or a C seventeen or a C one thirty, right? And it's interesting to think about like procuring vehicles, rocket, like like that. I think that's super cool. And if I'm recalling correctly, the particular branch of the Department of Defense that's interested in Starship is U.S. Transportation Command or U.S. Transcom. So. Yep. We are talking some kind of a capacity similar to like a C5 or something, uh, like a, or a C17, if I'm understanding it right. Like, chat, yeah, I think you are. Feel, yeah. feel free to chime in. Yeah. And I think it's actually it's really close to what a C5 can do, which is absolutely insane. Um, but to orbit, but, I mean, which is that means right. that means like you could put a tank, you put two tanks up there, which is like, huh? Yeah, two, okay. Two Abram anywhere in orbit, anywhere on the surface of the Earth, in like what, 45, 50 minutes. Um, Although then, that's, good luck getting the starship back because that's the whole. It is. It's absolutely. But if you think, I mean, it seems like an obvious capability that uh, the armed forces would want in whatever form it takes, even if it's just like, um, you know, disaster uh, response. Like, bam! Yep. Here's 150 tons of water and medical supplies and you know whatever else is is necessary. Um, I mean, shelters. The Navy and the Air speak. Force aren't just they don't just move guns around. They they do move right. a, a lot of humanitarian supplies around, especially the USNS ships, uh, the re, the resupply and uh, underway replenishment ships. Like, and then the, of course there's the Navy's like um, the hospital ships, the Comfort and the Mercy. They're not just moving, they just move guns and bullets around. You know, it's it is a lot of humanitarian relief. It that often gets moved around by airlift command. So I mean, 
Yeah, it's not. We, I mean, we're talking about tanks here, Jack. But yeah, I agree. It's not. It's not just going to be tanks. It's gonna, it's going to be probably like water, most likely water and like yeah. potable water. That's kind of important. You need that. I mean, I can already hear Chris um, B just squealing anyway because the fact that it's point to point. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm all here for Starship point to point. I'm I back Chris B on this one wholeheartedly. Musical Wolves I mean, is it, asking if Sawyer had a chance to go to space. Oh, EJ, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, well, I was just saying, like, I mean, it, it wouldn't even be point to point. You could have, if, if you have, like, 100 tons of water, for instance, you could just leave that on orbit. Just leave it up there. And then when you need it, just boom, bring the ship right back down, you know? Yeah. Like, you could stockpile it up there if you really want to, which would really help with, you know, depots and space stations and stuff like that, you know, oh, we just have a sort of strategic supply of water just sitting up there. But anyway, go on to the next question. No, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I, yep, I yep. wouldn't even be surprised if we get to a point where there are companies that handle delivery from orbit. Like, you know, we've got the little capsule pod that if you have a bunch of resources on orbit from a mining an asteroid or just stashing there or whatever, you know, you can just throw your thing in a Amazon inflatable heat shield thing and it goes down to wherever. <laughs> on the surface of the earth who knows mm -hmm. <laughs> what the future holds um musical wolves thank you for the super chat they are asking sawyer if you had a chance to go to space would you take jake with you no oh no there would be way too much cat hair floating around the spacecraft yeah good call okay, in a, everything in a the entire world. inside would become orange <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that uh, are you telling me there's something wrong with orange? How dare you say there's something wrong with orange? Uh, oh, I never said there's something wrong with orange. My the mascot for my school where I graduated from from college was the orange. Was it literally an orange? That's the most Florida thing ever. No, this was New York. This is Syracuse, New York. But yes, it was orange. We were with the team is the Syracuse Orange, and their mascot is an orange named Otto the Orange. Wow. Wow. Well, today so, I have no problems with orange. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Why? Why? Also, Crispy is saying I don't. I'm not wearing orange. I'm wearing orange. Okay. There's orange. Also, orange. Come on. That's on brand. Uh, but yeah, why? Why the auto the orange? Well, I mean, technically, it's a representation of the color orange. But uh, let's just say their previous name which had the word men at the end of it was kind of offensive to the people oh. whose land they stole. So they yeah, just okay. became the orange. Got it. Well, that makes sense. Um, and but the yeah, nozzle. So I am an orange man. <laughs> all right, good. I'm glad we're all on the same page there. The nozzle gifting a red team membership. Thank you so much to the nozzle. EJ, are you a, are you a venture brothers uh, fan? Are you a venture brothers guy? Oh, did a long time ago. Yeah. Of course yeah it's kind of an old show but the nozzle yeah, all right yeah. anyways moving moving on <laughs> um next topic yay more starship uh <laughs> we had a or this is this one was all me i saw an interesting tweet from eric ralph uh highlighting some comments made at an hls uh brief uh involving the human landing system for starship and that the spacex has been testing uh, a fully functioning life support um so the speculation is that the that weird hls nose cone the ship 22 nose cone repurposed uh into an hls mock-up may or may not have a fully functioning life support prototype installed on it and i just I don't know. I saw this tweet come by. It was interesting. I, I thought, you know, maybe we talk about it just because there's so many things that with SpaceX and especially Starbase that we see, you know, right? Just like sitting there out in the open. Um, but there's undoubtedly just so many things that we don't get to see that, you know, happen behind closed doors, whether that's development on in-situ resource real utilization or, perfect example, work on the Polaris um, the Polaris program um, uh, in vehicle or extra vehicular suits, uh, the pressure suits that are, you know, we haven't seen imagery of yet. Um, basically, all this is to say SpaceX is working on lots of things. And it's, it's just nice to have a data point that, yes, 
The human landing system is being actively worked on. There are prototypes, and maybe even this one that's been sitting in plain sight actually does have a uh, a life support system on it. I don't I don't know. What do you What do you all think? Do you think we've been seeing this sit out in the open and in, in in plain sight this whole time? Yeah, most likely. Uh, if if uh, Kevin, could you bring the uh, that original tweet? from Eric Ralph back up. I, I think I just want to just want to get a clarification on the um on what the uh the tweet actually said because they said a life support system but it looks like it says a life like a functioning life support mock up which means it's something that works that can supply starship with life support needs but it's that that suggests that it's nowhere near the fidelity that they're going to need uh, like for flight, right? Right. Yeah, see, right, absolutely. It, uh, functioning life support mock-up, which means they got something in there that works. If, I mean, knowing SpaceX, if I had to guess, is pure speculation on my part. It's probably Dragon Dragon Two derived, so it's just put something in there that works that you can use for life support for now, and then scale it to what you need to do. That that seems kind of like SpaceX's modus operandi there, but uh, I wouldn't. I don't know. Does that means like, oh, Starship life support system is all ready to go? Probably not, but. Life support systems are a long lead item when it comes to systems engineering. That's something that you need some time to make sure that it works correctly. I mean, you really don't want to mess that one up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think I would agree with your assessment that it's very likely, if not based on Dragon hardware, uh, has Dragon hardware heritage. Because it seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. Just like scale up the thing that you have for Dragon to Starship size and then start testing prototypes of it and see what works and what doesn't. And... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Thought it was interesting. Sawyer, any thoughts? Took the words right out of my mouth. It's got to be some legacy Dragon life support systems in there. Yep. Neat. All right. Well, we've come to the point in the show notes where I have a thing here that says Jack Ramble topic. I mean, we're talking about Starship, so we can just close it <laughs> off with a Ramble topic here, as if the topics so far have not been Ramble topics. Um, what is your favorite, most implausible Starship design configuration? We were, earlier we were talking about, you know, the Starship extra heavy turbo, you know, with the three boosters and the, like, none of this is going to happen. We're, this is no longer news. We're just joking around here. But, like, what, what Starship configuration that is the most implausible is your personal favorite? I'm going to go with side-mounted starship a la the shuttle um that's probably <laughs> yeah. my most favorite most cursed starship variant um ej we'll go to you first if you have any strong I... feelings so side mounted is good i i like the the configuration with starship on top super heavy on the bottom but starship has the head like up if you look at you know we're going from the top to the bottom you have your header tanks up at the front and then maybe some type of crew uh flight deck thing and then maybe a payload bay behind that you know so i'm saying with doors that open up like this that would be that would be yeah. the one that i that i i like you know basically just sh space shuttle ship starship you mean like shuttle, yeah, like put some delta yeah. wings on there maybe no, some no, you don't need to do that much. Don't need to do, <laughs> i mean we could if, i mean if we we're gonna party we could do that but no 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 no, no just 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 that part just that part all right, cool deal. <laughs> Sawyer, I, any 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 thoughts I mean, on your favorite cursed starship? Yeah, I mean, why just try and remodel starship itself for the actual crew compartment and the payload bay? Just stick a shuttle on top. Shuttle C, starship C. I don't know. There, you just just get one of the shuttles sold. out of retirement and stick it right on top. I'm sold. You win. That's you win nice. the ramble topic, Sawyer. Good job. You get one ramble point. Uh, for which uh, you can redeem it for nothing. Um, cool. Not a pun token? <laughs> I mean, that... No, pun, uh, no, no, no pun tokens. <laughs> that configuration reminds me of, uh, <laughs> you know, the early shuttle concepts where they were talking about putting the external tank on top of an S1C, like old school Saturn shuttle. I mean, Sawyer, that, dude, it could work super heavy with the external tank and the shuttle on top. I mean, that's that's totally doable. I, I, the, well, that's what it, I was like, kind of picturing. Quote unquote doable. It's not. It's probably 
never going to happen. But I mean, it, you know, it, that's that, you know, that you could you could do that. NASA thought about doing something like that. You know, it's, it's fine. We'll do it. It works in Kerbal, right? Like, come on now. Or just uh, what oversized seeing... Dream Chaser on top. Yeah, sounds good to me, man. So oversized X37B. I mean, let's just have a party. Why not? Yeah. Um, but the video you're seeing on the left there is actually a video we did on Starship variants, um, actually plausible ones. Uh, so if, if you if you want to wet your whistle a little bit more than what we're doing here, feel free to check that out. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed though. Nobody said ship 26. There's a reason. Because it's, it's not going to fly. No one likes ship 26. Right. Yeah. Well, no one we're likes talking it. about the most. We're talking about the most cursed starship variants. I figured uh, it was an easy. It was an easy dunk even on the... 26. That's even too much. That's even being too nice to it. To put okay, it fair, into that fair. mix of, <laughs> yeah. We have we have Kevin yelling in the background that ship twenty six is the best ship. Um, well, if I suddenly if my air, internet so disappears can... or I go missing, then it's Kevin. Okay, noted. But yeah, let's. I mean, straw poll. Ship twenty six bad. I, all all four, raise your hand. Ship twenty six bad. All right, it's been decided. Best ship. Thank you. Ship 26 Thank is you. the best ship. <laughs> can they hear that? Are they, are they able to hear that? I don't, I don't know if we tube. can do that. It's Yeah, it's just a tube. It's a tube with a cone and some stringers. Okay, anyways. <laughs> oh, my. That, that apparently been... that made air. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's, good. That's you Kevin. can hear that, yeah. Quality. Quality Another, jokes. Over, over on my chat, Jack, they're saying put Hoppy on top of Super Heavy. What did you just call it? Hoppy. Oh. You've just made Jack angry. All right. He said the shuttle was A tier. You said it was S tier. How could it how could it possibly be S tier? But it, you made me it, concede A tier, man. No. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Ding, you have ding. to concede Hoppy now. Uh-uh. No. No, I will never concede Hoppy. I will always call Star Hopper by its full name, Star Hopper, or at worst, Hopper. I refuse to disrespect such a historic vehicle by calling it Hoppy. Who would do the such a thing? Two- no, this is a, these are two different things. These are two different things. Absolutely not. This is the internet. That- we can compare anything to anything. Don't you know? <laughs> Wait, are they are they? By the way, there's a tower. The there's a tower segment behind moving right behind you. Yeah, that's a live view of Kennedy Space Center, mm-hmm. and uh, looks like some more tower segments are getting ready to get yeah. shipped over to Starbase. Yeah, I'm. This is I'm, live. I'm here live. I'm live here at, at the Kennedy Space Center press site, and we are uh, currently. Oh, you took me off the screen. Okay. <clears throat> I was right. still enjoying. Yeah, no, it. tower segments are cool. Yeah. Hi. I don't really have too, too, too much to, to say right now. What, what, what's that? <laughs> yeah, look over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good deal. Wow, that tower uh, so yeah, looks a lot like a chair. It does look like a chair. It's Change like, the camera. like an office chair, like maybe from Ikea. Oh my god, it's a ghost chair. <laughs> All right, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> No, no love for ghost chair. Okay, um, okay. So <laughs> no, I give we have some established. Love. We have established DJ is wrong about Hoppy, uh, and the <laughs> shuttle is A tier. And yeah, let's let's keep on rolling. I mean, uh, does anyone let's keep rolling? Uh, you want to guess what I'm talking about? At least about? he didn't say. At least he didn't say Percy or Ingy. I okay okay. I kind of. I kind of like Ingy. I kind of like Ingy. Like <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I never said I was consistent, okay? I just have strongly held opinions and yell until everybody agrees with me. I never said I was consistent. See, that's why you write a home on the internet, man. It's perfect. <laughs> it's ingenuity. People... I've heard the Ingy, Ginny. No, ingenuity. Okay, you know what? I'll give you this, Sawyer. Ingenuity. I will. I will abide. Much like the dude, I can especially, abide. especially after we say farewell to it. 
yeah, I guess at this point we should probably um, talk about good old ingenuity. <sighs> it dead. Yeah, but, it seems yeah. like it had some fatigue on the blades. I mean, seven. But, what is it? Seventy-two flights. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it was only. I think it was, it was supposed, supposed to be five. Five, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, hmm. I'll take I'll take seventy-two. Even with JPL's like classic uh, under promise, over deliver that they love to do with their um, planetary probes and whatnot. Uh, even with that, like factored in, still amazing amount of of uh of flights out of that vehicle an amazing amount of data gained but it's not over in terms of more data more better they're going to do a little wiggle of the rotors and they're going to spin them up to um sort of try and assess how much damage uh they've taken so they're not gonna fly with it anymore but i i, I saw this and figured i'd throw it in in the old show notes here so we could give ingenuity some love and uh and scott manley is surely happy because <laughs> for like at least a week after the announcement of the the rotor blade damage he was tweeting various comments about how they could treat it like an off-center washing machine and fly it this way or spin the rotors and gather some data on the dust it kicks up or any kind of um use that they could pull out of it and sure enough here we are uh they're going to spin and wiggle the rotors and gather some more data that will result in more uh more i guess successful operations of flying vehicles off off world which is awesome because being limited to traveling over the ground is kind of uh kind of i guess limiting i'm just saying the same words over and over again somebody else talk how this is good this is important right uh yeah i mean this yeah, is... man. i mean go ahead sawyer do it up no i was gonna say i mean this is absolutely huge the science that we're talking about here this is the first time that we've had powered flight on another planet i mean we've all seen in our kerbal builds where you know you've got a plane that can fly over the surface of another planet but that's kerbal <laughs> there's the washing machine um <laughs> <laughs> sorry god Got a little distracted by that. Um, but it, yeah, the science that you're getting from it, you're now coming up with a concept that as we progress further, we can study much larger parts of the red planet. I mean, you could have a rover somewhere and then eventually come up with a flying machine that as you evolve will be able to fly miles and miles away or kilometers and kilometers away and get more data about the surface of different locations, especially if you add more scientific instruments to it. And then, of course, once we start colonizing and get people there, just we already now have proof that, hey, we can create like helicopters on Mars that can move people between bases or science uh, targets. So I, I just think that this is only the beginning and the science that it's given so far is groundbreaking. Uh, I guess in more ways than one, because you'd be flying in the air instead of the ground. Air or is it blade air breaking? breaking, blade breaking. Oh, <laughs> no, you made me sad. <laughs> but uh, but no, for real, it's it's cool. I guess my thought was that it's cool to see, even though uh, its flight campaign is over. I mean, the hardware is still there. It's still on the surface of Mars, and we'll wring just a little bit more science out of it, um, even though it's it's not. You know, it's not going to fly again. But uh, wait, you guys are both. Are you both Android people, users? No. Yeah. You're you're an you're an iPhone I, person, EJ. Why are you gonna make me admit that on the internet, man? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just curious because they. Another thing that that was mentioned or that I saw mentioned this week in regards to ingenuity is the, you know, the fact that it had a Snapdragon processor in there, which is just basically a mobile phone processor you know not some kind of crazy radiation hardened uh insanity that is heavy as a brick and costs insane amounts like that's one of the really cool things i think about ingenuity as well is the fact that uh, a lot of it was commercial off-the-shelf hardware um with all of the you know benefits that that comes with that so i don't know ingenuity well thank you for your science i mean i think one of Ingenuity's best things that it did was when it was, you know, when it was working is going and seeing the back shell that, I mean, we're, we're seeing footage of the Rover 
and the sky crane landing over there, but that was attached to a back shell after it jettisoned the heat shield. And they went and found the aero shell and they went and looked at it, which is super cool. I've never seen something like that. You always wonder what happens to this other equipment, you know, after it separates the rover, or what happens to the heat shield? Where does that end up? But now, you know, Ingenuity was able to get us those pictures, which is really freaking cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I can only imagine the amount of data that can be gleaned from something like that in terms of how did the hardware hold up, where perhaps might need more, you know, structural reinforcement, where do we have plenty of margin and can make things lighter, um, you know, all all sorts of things of, of that nature, I'm sure, are uh, what you can learn from being able to go inspect a piece of hardware like that, which we haven't, as you said, uh, been able to do before. Pretty nifty. Are you... Are you? I, that's right. You're looking at a green screen, right? Like you can't actually see the tower. No, I can see the tower right? segments right there, dude. It's awesome. Oh, that's right. No, sorry. You're, you're yeah. You're at KSC. You're at KSC right now. I forgot. So. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you blurred me out. No, come back. <laughs> oh, I swear it's not a green screen. <laughs> oh, good deal. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for the background to randomly change now. No, no, yeah, geez. yeah right. It's just like clowns all of a sudden. <laughs> Don't do that. Nobody do that, please. EJ or, or uh, Kevin or Jay or nobody. Anyways. Um, I don't know. What do we talk about next? We got a couple more things on the list here. Who's got the list up? I feel like I've been calling the shots. Does someone, does someone really feel like chatting about something as we have like, uh, you know, 13, 14 minutes or so to go here? What, What's... What are you hankering for? I'm not gonna. Dude, I saw, know, I saw a every... question or a chat, a thing that went through chat about you, you know Falcon Nine with Falcon Heavy extended fairings or something. It was, did that show up? Can can we can we answer that question? That was a good question. I think. Is that popping uh, through? Like it was, it was a little bit ago. I'm looking for it. You might need to vamp while I look for it. Did they? Was it? Was it? Uh, NASA? Like did they at NASA space flight or was it just raw chat? No, no, it was. Also, a, I, I don't know if it was a super chat or something. I'm still getting used to like what to look for on YouTube. Right. Do, do you extend uh, fairing Falcon 9 with a stubby nozzle? Oh, if that was a. Never mind. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> yep, never mind. Never mind. We'll just, we'll just forget that question was ever asked. Just, uh, yeah, chat. Just push the <laughs> tiny button behind your ear. That deletes the last 45 seconds, um, and, and we'll be good to go. I know um, I, I know something that will turn this whole conversation upside down, and that's if we talk about Slim. Hey! Uh, oh, oh hey, come on, man. Hey, I love you, Sawyer. You're the best. You're the greatest of all time. Slim live. Slim <laughs> live. Uh, Jump, go for it, buddy. I'm, I'm handing the reins over to you while I sip my bubbly water and then mute so you can't hear me burp. <laughs> Honesty, I appreciate that. I mean, yeah, uh, for those who are unaware, Jax's Slim Lander uh, landed with a soft touchdown on the moon. Uh, however, we later found out, thanks to the rover deployed from an image, that it landed upside down. Now, they had had basically zero power to the vehicle, but mm -hmm. they were hoping that when the sun moved a little more westerly, which is where the solar panels were facing, that they could actually get some power and start running science. And sure enough, just the other day, they announced that it's alive. Slim is alive. It, it got power back and is now running a whole bunch of science operations on the moon upside down but running them you love to see it's it it's crazy i mean e even the L lev one and two the thing that the the secondary rovers that deployed um i'd like to point out that those are toys those are straight up toys made by toy companies, companies. yeah yeah made by a toy company yeah. you could buy that you can buy lev one and two it is a toy that they were just like oh this would make a good moon rover and they attached it to the side of a lander and it went, which is yeah, pretty and, awesome. And the pictures that we're seeing of the lander yeah. landed on its head were taken by these these little rovery things that are basically toys. I think one of them was made by the company that uh, made the Transformers toys, if I'm not mistaken. Like, how how great is that? You, I mean, it's just amazing. 
It makes me it makes me happy. It's great until like deep... until no, I was gonna say it's great until they start actually transforming and trying to take over the moon. But yeah. Oh, oh my god, we've seeded the moon with Decepticons. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know am anything about Optimus Prime, leader yeah, of the you. Autobots. <clears throat> Sorry, I had something in my no, throat. No, you're good. Yeah, it sounded like you had a you had a cough or something, but I think it's, I think it's cleared yeah, up. Yeah, no, I, I, here, let me take a drink of water. Oh, much better. <laughs> uh, here's one. Here's a question from. Uh, I don't even know how to say this name, but they're asking, couldn't they fire one engine on Slim and try to tip it upright? EJ, well, as a as a uh... purveyor of of Kerbal and Kerbal like things and a generally <laughs> smart person, how do you how do you feel about this question? Well. Um, the, the engine, uh, so Slim uses differential thrust for control. All right. It's not like you have a vectored thrust engine here. Um, if we bring up the, the landing footage, Kevin, can you, can you throw that landing footage up here? The ones with all the, the gauges that are changing all different colors and stuff. Um, so all the engines are basically pointed in one direction. They're, they're pointed on the long axis of the vehicle. And what they, what, what Slim used is differential thrust to go, and um, to, to, to come down and land. So if you look at the, the, um, the rates that are over here, uh, you see those, all those engines, you know, you got three gauges on the top, the left, the bottom, and the right. Those are the three engines. They're all facing down. And then there's the percentage indicators here uh, that's uh, in the middle of the screen that say OME PX and OME MX are the, manu the those are like your main engines, right? All of them are facing in one direction, and Slim to, is basically nose dived into the ground right now. So firing those engines, you you might be able to get something out of it to some type of rotational rate, but it, it would be like if you had like an airplane and the, it was nosed into the ground. Firing the engines probably isn't going to do <laughs> much. I'd also like to add that the I think it was the OME PX engine is destroyed. It uh, it wrecked itself during during landing here if if you back up i think it was 15 23 39 on the uh on the clock on this on the video uh you could see that the orbiter maneuvering engines exceed 450 percent duty cycle and uh yeah that this breaks this breaks things um yeah it, it back it, it gotta go back a little bit more uh it, yeah it blew a nozzle off most likely because it overheated uh, they overheated the engines. Uh, RCS on spacecraft that are moving around in space tend to be, they tend to modulate thrust. So it's kind of clicking on and off. Like tch, 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 tch. if you've watched like dragon fly around in space or seen any videos from SpaceX, you can hear the RCS firing. There's, there's footage of that somewhere out there. And um, it's like pulses. It's like bump, 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 yeah. bump. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, a, mm -hmm. it's not like a, yep. I, don't, I don't know. That's the best way I can think to describe it is. I yeah, mean, they they modulate it to make sure that they don't overheat the engines. If you if you fire the engine too much and exceed the duty cycle, which you could theoretically do with a hyper with hypergolic because it's just pressure fed, you could flex way too much heat into the nozzle and melt it. Um, a scenario, a similar scenario to what may have happened here is I don't know if you guys and we probably don't have the footage for this, but Omega when when Northrop Grumman tested the now defunct Omega rocket booster, uh, they were getting a uh, uh, plume over expansion and that created flow separation in the nozzle and the test end and blew the nozzle up something something similar to that but for different reasons um i'm still kind of bummed omega did not uh did not yeah, me pan too, out man. giant solid what could go wrong <laughs> i i think it's a great idea personally um so, oh, and the, I mean, the, that person. Air, if Ares oh, One did it, then no. The fact that Ares One did it, forget it. No, it's bad. Oh, I love Ares One. Come on. No, you're part of the Ares I mean, One fan club. Dude, hail stick, man! Absolutely. What a great rocket. Yeah, I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm a recent convert, but I am I'm a pretty huge fan of. Uh, of of Ares One, it just it just looks so Kerbal. How could you not like it? 
Sawyer looks like we've just slapped him directly in the mouth. Are you okay, Sawyer? <laughs> no, I'm not. I didn't realize I was among Ares huggers here. There are dozens of us. Right. Dozens okay. of us. <clears throat> Kevin, you got you this thing. Started you started this riots. Hold on. Let me take a look. <laughs> Oh goodness! It's fifteen, yeah, uh, fifteen twenty three thirty nine. That was it. Sorry, I, I did. I was trying to remember the time off the top of my head. But watch, watch. See, it says double zero percent in the center of the screen down the bottom. the The engines go get very unhappy here. Um, if you if you play that footage there. Yeah, generally you want to keep your engines happy. I think is a is a good like best practice kind of thing. Yep. Let's see. Is it going to play? And props to, to JAXA for having legit. Yeah, no, no. Like it's, not, it's not just in like the back a... channel. It's, it's a little bit further back. Sorry, guys. Um, Yeah, oh, you're good. Yep. Yep. And yeah, dude, they not every company is going to show you the rates, the rates of the vehicle. So where that kind of W, Y, W, Z and W, X are. And then your IMU measurement, like nobody Nobody does that. You, so, right. but it's cool because if you know what if you know what to look for here, you can see what the vehicle's doing. Like once again, right. we we could basically pinpoint the exact spot where the engine decided to not engine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you generally want your engines to uh, to engine. Yeah, up to a point. Yep, yep. up to a point. Mm -hmm. uh, are we are we able to? Are we at, it's are we about at the right point. Where we, were we able to see it? It's about 50, 50 meters off the deck for the folks in the back channel. Uh, at 50 meters, right around there. Uh, so if you could use that to correlate the time. I forget what the time step was. I thought I, I thought I remembered it, but I did not remember it at all. I believe That's what happens to members of the Ares 1 fan club. Oh, fuff. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff and fuff. nonsense. I, dude, I love Ares 1. How do you not like Ares 1? Yeah, how do you not like Ares 1? What's wrong with Ares 1? It's beautiful. It's hilarious. It's Kerbal. It's amazing. Hydrolox upper right, stage. It, it's, it'd be cool in Kerbal, but in real life, it makes no sense to have a single stick, five segment SRB, and, and then the top, it's just, it looks ugly as all get up. It obviously had issues with separation, which I'm sure they would have worked out, but still, it's just, that's what we were going to be launching crew on for the future. Yeah, it's, it's fine. like okay, it looked, we go from yeah, like we go from the Saturn V on top of an SRB. Like, what's what, how, how can you go wrong with that corn dog rocket? Okay, so we go from the Saturn V to the space shuttle to a stick. I mean, okay, that's fair. That's fair, you know. But but you're also yeah. ex deliberately excluding Ares Five. Let's see. I was, hey, this is just the Aries 1 fan club. I didn't say I dislike all of Aries. Constellation oh, it had its potential. Oh, oh, EJ, lay, lay your yeah. knowledge on us. Yeah, I, I yeah, no, no, sorry, I agree. Aries 1 is a great dev vehicle for Aries 5, but it, that frame popped up. It popped up over there. If you look down there at the duty cycle on those motors, they go to 450%. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not ideal. Uh, yeah, it's right around 50 meters, which we know from the Jaxa press conference. That's where they said something went wrong. See, it, four, 440 right there. And in case anybody is wondering if you've heard like your favorite space flight company go through a go, no go poll, what the red line monitor does, there's your answer. That, that, that's, that's what the red line monitor does. Make sure that nothing red shows up on the screen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly where that motor decided to motor and you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure. it, it, it engined, engined, uh, I don't even know. I can't even say it. I love it. Uh, well, I don't love that it broke, but I'm glad I'm glad slim still lives and uh, they were able to get some power uh, when the sun angle was in the right position. I think now it's heading into lunar night, if I'm not mistaken, which lasts like what, it, like two weeks? Yeah, it's in standby from the last uh, update from the Slim account, uh, Slim social media account. But they're gonna try to turn it back on when the day when the daytime comes back. Yep. 
All right. Well, but, hopefully uh, it come, uh, comes back yet again. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, once again, it, for people that don't know telemetry too hard or like, you, you know, like, oh, we got to check the data. We got to check the data. This is usually what you're checking here for like flight data. This is for like um, guidance, navigation and control. This is what a GNC person would be seeing here. So you're the the three green bars that are up kind of towards the top, like W, Y, W, Z, and W, X are your rotation. That's your rotation rate. It's in degrees a second radian. And for people that don't understand what the heck that means, if the green bar goes to one side or another, or on the W, Z, which is roll, it goes left or right, or on the W, X, it goes up or down. That's the way it's rotating. It's the way the ship is rotating through space, right? Uh, and then if you look at the bottom left-hand corner down there, you have... Uh, the IMU, which is an inertial measurement unit, that is in no particular direction. It is basically, I don't know, it, it's it's an accelerometer, but you, could, you don't call it accelerometer, it's an IMU. That's basically showing you the translation movement. So like if it's moving up, down, left, or right, or you know, if it's falling down towards the ground, that'll show you where it's translating. You can look at these and you can just figure out what the vehicle's doing. After 50 meters, when after the the PX and the MX engines uh, you know, decided they wanted to enter the shadow realm. Um, they, uh, you see the vehicle cause one of them breaks, it kind of turns a little bit and then it comes down and lands. Uh, it compensated for the differential thrust, which is actually super impressive, super impressive guidance, navigation and control. But, um, yeah, th that's just a little bit on what all that stuff means. It's, it's cool. You can tell exactly what the vehicle is doing. Heck, you can even see on your, wyz and x axis over there you could see right when the thing hits the ground and starts to roll over nose nose and into the into the dirt so neat you loved it yeah i, I mean i love super to, see, to see this level of of information shared with the public yes big shout out to jacks on that yeah it's really cool when a company shows this information i mean we've seen we've seen stuff like this with like cygnus in the past uh in north of grumman they they do show sometimes they show stuff like this they used to on their old cast but uh yeah if you ever wondered like you know when when ula launches and they have a um a commentator providing launch vehicle ascent data when that's what they mean when they say oh the rates look good body roll rates look good that's that's exactly what they're looking at same kind of stuff but obviously not on a lunar lander all right um you know what I'm thinking I'm just going to steal Doss's joke here. <laughs> he, he said, uh, we, we haven't seen GNC this good since Astra w went out the gate. My guy, dude. <laughs> it's too good. It's too nice. good. I take zero credit. Nice. That was all done. Dude, that's, that um, was awesome. It was awesome. Your, your reaction to it, too, is like one of my favorite things ever. Like, <laughs> like, that, was, yeah. that was amazing. Because uh, you know, oh, yeah. we were we were stream partners for that, and uh, you know you you have uh, certain boundaries you play within, and and you know you were you were just unchained and allowed to be as enthusiastic as all of us watching were, just like it's going, go, I go, couldn't believe it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I could believe it, man. I, I I was shocked, genuinely. <laughs> if if y'all have not seen that, uh, is that like? pinned or something i don't know how twitch works is that is that it's, easily be is easily findable is it yeah it's probably around dude uh the, it, it spoiler it contains some minor obscenities uh if you're family family <laughs> you might not want to watch that clip yeah good to know thank you for the for the warning there uh so yeah. the warning, <laughs> this is your warning for is there anything else we want to hit is there something you is there, you have a a scratch an itch on your back you want to scratch like what do you like get your last thoughts in i think we're gonna start to wrap her up here but i know we have a couple more things on the dock you know if there's something you're really hankering to to talk about this week um i mean i, I just i guess i'm i'm opening the floodgates thank you sawyer um relativity recently posted some pictures that they're retooling LC-16 from Terran 1 to Terran R, which is actually cool. I don't know about you guys. It just, it makes me pretty dang happy to see Missile Row with so many active launch pads. That's really cool. 
because those pads have been those pads have sat and done nothing for a really long time, which I think is really neat. Also, uh, and once again, back end guys, you you guys probably aren't gonna like have this news teed up because this is just brand new news. So it, it was um, via space and. I'm doing the, the break what? news sound. Go ahead. Oh, uh, there was a memorandum, the memorandum of understanding uh, of two other companies that, believe it or not, are going to partner and use Launch Complex 13, which is um, actually really, really interesting because Launch Complex 13 is where SpaceX's landing pads are. That's nice. weird. Down the, so also, SpaceX yeah. is rescinding their landing pads at the Cape, which is weird. I mean, surely they can find another place to slap two landing pads, right? I would hope so. I, I hey, know my I'm theory sorry. Sorry for about that. Early. No, no, sorry. I have my theories about that. By the way, the that, birds but, were very uh, intrigued by your, um, by your comment behind you. Burbs. Burbs. There's only about, what, 200 of them? And a falcon. <laughs> hey. Oh, sick. Yo. Oh, this is great. Look at that. Look at that. See is that booster over there? That's sweet. Did you run over from... Uh, oh, okay. We have the pointing meme down. Perfect. Did you Did you leave? <laughs> the, you, you left the press site and you drove over to, yeah. to Space Live, right? Yeah, it's like a 10-minute drive, right? It's, that's not far away. Oh. oh, yeah. Totally doable. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Wicked. That's, that's excellent. I'm not is he, are we sure EJ is not a ghost? I'm not uh, <laughs> uh, All right. I've known I'm him, out. I've known him for a decade and I'm not sure. Nice. All right, well, we've got we've got ghost EJ, we've got me with no hair. We've got Jake a costume lawyer. I think uh, I'm sure he can lend you some hair. Yeah, thanks. I I need it clearly. All shiny up there. Uh, uh, <laughs> No comment. No, I'm wearing a hat for a reason. <laughs> hat gang. All right, cool. Um, I think uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I do want to thank Maxi for the super chat. They say, imagine for a second F9 with Falcon Heavy's extended fairing, no landing legs or grid fins with a stubby nozzle. Ramble on this, Jack. We already, uh, it's, it's bad. We don't like it. It's bad. Stubby nozzle, bad. Uh, Brian Green, but thank you for the support. Brian Green, um, asking people to hit the like button with a $2 super. Thank you for that. Uh, Gateway to Mars spelled backwards says read it backwards, Jack. So thank you for the explainer. And <laughs> they also say just roll it over to provide more usefulness. I think we're, they're talking about Slim there. Thank you for the support. If only they could roll it over somehow, like put really strong, you know, like when you're in Kerbal and you put like really strong gyros on it so you can just like tumble around the surface of Minimus or something. Is that just, is that just me? Okay. Did you just say Minimus? One of them? Sure. Why not? I don't know. I haven't played Kerbal in a hot minute. That's the one with like barely any gravity, right? It's Minimus. Minimus? Minimus? Oh my god. Um. By the way, I just want to say, I did see online, I want to give a huge shout out to whoever it was online that used the picture that the rover took of Slim and recreated the uh, start screen to KSP with it. <laughs> it, it already has right. the upside down capsule, so moon or bust. I think, uh, I think with the, the Oscar <laughs> outro music that we're getting now, I think that's our cue. Tell us to wrap it up. Right. Thank you so much to our launch directors and our flight engineers. You are all the bedrock with which NSF is built. Our members are awesome, and especially so our launch directors and the flight engineers. Thank you so much to all of you. If you become a launch director or a flight engineer, you get your name at the end of NASA Space Flight Live episodes. Uh, but thank you to all of our members. Thank you to everyone coming out, hitting the like button, doing the support, however it is. It doesn't have to be monetary. We appreciate you. Of course, let us know. This is a new week, a new format, a new time slot. We expect feedback. We appreciate feedback. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty, it was pretty good. You guys think it was pretty good? I think we need more time. Just saying. 
I, I, right, I do not accept the outro music. I'm just saying. All right. Well, maybe more, maybe we more look... shuttle, more better. Yeah, well, we could. I, mean... I do. I do still really want to argue about the shuttle being in an S tier, but maybe we can make that a recurring. Yeah, segment we didn't or get. Like we S-tier. didn't get to have a ding ding moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, you know, you can't have it all, Sawyer. Um. Yeah. All right. I think with that, Sawyer, thanks for being on NSF Live this week, trying out the new format. My, my absolute pleasure. Hey, this is, it's fun to try something new out and, uh, you know, to see how it evolves from this first episode of the revamp. I'm really excited. And as you can see, Jake is enthralled as well. He does look enthralled. That's all that matters. Yeah, I, I do think, uh, you know, this is just the first one of these that we're doing. So we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, EJ. Thanks, buddy. Hi. Always good. Yeah, Always no, good seeing thanks your for having me. Chatting. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, everybody, for watching. I do appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And, you know, I'd like to thank the shuttle, the S tier launch vehicle. Uh, no, well, I will not be back- taking questions <laughs> on this. In the background, we had Kevin Michael Reed. You can see his info there in the top right. Thank you, Kevin, for running the stream. I always like to say, running in the giant human-sized hamster wheel that makes things go. Uh, we couldn't do it without you, buddy. So thanks. Uh, and I also believe we had Jay Keegan in the background operating some stuff as well. So, yeah. Feedback. Viewers, give feedback and comment. Do YouTube things. Hit bell. Do subscribe. Do... Oh, can I, can I say it? I don't, I, don't, I don't actually get to do it. Like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. Oh, dude, I can't do that on my end. I don't, we don't do that over on Twitch. But now you can say, oh, man. That was weird. I don't want to do this anymore. All right, cool. Back to you, Jack. How'd that feel? It's over. That felt just awful. Kill it. Yeah, it just didn't kill like it. that at all. It, does. it feels <laughs> awful every time, doesn't it? Kill it. Can we end? Yeah, end yeah. Hit no. the end button. Make yeah. it stop. All right, sign us down. We're good. And here we go. Chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Water tower is fine! Yes! Tango down to nominal. Water down to nominal. It's pouring! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Dequinesh! Look at that! Put that in the big bag. 343 unfolds to go. Indeed. We rise together, back to the moon and beyond. This is methane to be igniting the flare, correct? Yikes. You bet. We don't need any more of these.
Can you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? On screen? Um, hey, SMJ, thanks, man. Thanks for the sub, dude. <laughs> I appreciate it. Stop Space Nerd. Dude, that was my idea. Throwing Space Nerd on there. <laughs> what do you say, boys? Ready to play with some beavers? Wait. No. All right. You left your orange off on that NSF chat? All right, man. Hell yeah. Oh, crap. My camera was being used by the NSF. By NSF. I'm, I'm not here. Uh, give me one second, dude. Let me re-enable the camera. Hello? Yeah. All right. What's up? <laughs> I think you should drive around Germany and stream it. <laughs> So what'd you guys think? Pretty good, huh? Not bad. Not bad. I think it was a good time. Motorint. Remember that. That was the vocab word of the day. SMK, thanks for that sub, dude. Thanks to Prime. I appreciate it, man. Right on. Right on. I hope you guys enjoy that because we're doing it again next week. Everybody loves a, a wet beaver. <laughs> Put the Cygnus hat back on? Oh, oh why you got him? I gotta make me do this, man. Why <laughs> you gotta make me do this? It was engine. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that was fun, dude. I, I enjoyed that. It was a good time. Yeah, the solar panels. They're, they're flickering. That's how you know they're on. Sure, no problem. Really found it funny. The antenna hat, legit. Dude, Northrop Grumman gave me this hat, you know. I was down at NG11 with um, with Das. They gave us this. I have. I also have Cygnus socks. No joke. I have Cygnus socks and and a Cygnus hat. Yeah. No, for real. I think I gave my Cygnus socks to Brimo though. My wife. My wife. My wife. <laughs> Cygnus hat. Are we doing this? The shuttle is S tier, all right? Jack is wrong. Well, oh, woman, you are wrong. 